So the SNES Classic is coming out one month from now, and it has this really cool rewind feature. I bet you didn't know that you could have the capability of rewinding games on the Mini NES as of right now. And I'm going to show you how this is done. We're going to start out with my favorite personal NES game, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. A lot of you guys get stuck fighting Tyson, but just like Ronda Rousey and Mike Tyson in real life, a lot of their wins were on an intimidation factor alone. Well, we're not gonna let that happen, Tyson. I know you want to eat my children, but... We're gonna rewind. So that's my Tyson's Punch-Out using Rewind. We're going to go to another game, uh, how about Arcade Pac-Man? You may, you may have played the Pac-Man Championship Edition on uh, PS3, Xbox, etc. It's a really cool game. Remember this? Matrix style. So that's Pac-Man Arcade with slow motion as well as rewind. And we're gonna go to Gradius for Nintendo. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Rewind. And slow motion. And we're gonna do another text example. How about Super Mario Brothers? Of course I'm gonna show you how to do this. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> if we want precision jumping Uh, that works pretty good for slow motion as well as rewinding games and I could actually put the capability into fast forward as well So if you get a game that has an endless cinema at the beginning and you want to skip it You could fast forward it as well. And what about this crazy game Silver Surfer? He's supposed to be this literally almost invulnerable superhero and anything takes him out in this game I mean, I got damn, like, goldfish basically taking me out of here. What am I going to do? Oh, I'll just rewind it. It's too bad. This game actually has a pretty decent soundtrack, but, uh, 
they really made him pretty weak in this. And you know, slow motion makes every shmup game a hell of a lot easier. Okay, we're gonna test another core, because this is the NES core that I've been doing mainly so far in one arcade game. We're gonna test out the Genesis core. Actually, we'll jump to my favorite Super Nintendo game, Pilot Wings. We'll see how Rewind works on that, since it's a uh, SNES classic coming out in a month from now anyway. I played the hell out of this game as well as the Nintendo 64 version back in the day and it's still my favorite game on both systems. After one or two more tests I'm going to show you guys how this is done. And you may notice a little bit of a screen crackling, um, sound crackling here. This is on the SNES 2010 core. And it's basically due to the accurate emulation. And there's a couple of tweaks you can do to fix that. Like if I'm going to quick menu, options, you could turn super, super FX overclock on. And that helps on 2010 games, but you could also use the 2005 core, which is less accurate, but FX games run better as a result. But I tend to use 2010 for everything, just use an overclock. And of course, if you land on this platform, we get the bonus stage. And the penguin. You could skip the biplane stage completely by doing this bonus stage. Not perfect enough, so I'm gonna just uh, redo this. Close. Good enough. Should get me past the stage either way. Good enough. And we skip the biplane stage completely. Anyways, I'm going to show you how this trick is done now. You're going to need to do two things in particular. You're going to basically open the game. Doesn't matter which game. And I've tested this out with about every core and it's worked with everything so far. Once you're in the core, you can open up RetroArch Options, you're going to go to Quick Menu, sorry, Settings, then you want to go to Frame Throttle, you want to click this Rewind, and you want to Enable it. So you have to have Frame Throttle, then Rewind Enabled, then I'm going to back up, then I'm going to go to Input Settings, and this is where you got to pay close attention because once you make these changes, you cannot revert them, there's only two ways to go back to the normal settings and I'll show you both of these. So I'm going to input hotkey binds and these are all the things that you could key bind and like I said once you input these like key bind them you're stuck with it. The only thing you can do is basically pay, play hot potato and pass them around and I'll show you the two ways to revert but I rewind and for right now I just do it onto my R button I mean, obviously, when you're playing PlayStation 1, etc., you're going to want to have it on something else. Then I have my slow motion. And I have that on my L key for now. So, again, these are pretty much stuck. I mean, you could only reprogram them to something else or leave them where they're at. But I'm going to show you how to fix this. So, again, we have rewind and slow motion enabled for now. You can also do fast forward and hold the button down to do fast forward. This works great for cinemas. Now I'm going to switch over to the computer and I'm going to show you how you can revert back to the normal retro arc settings if you screw up anything.
because obviously if you change select and start, you're going to be unable to go back into RetroArch settings. Okay, I'm using the FTP. I have FileZilla right here. And if you go into your hack sheet, you have to have it open, of course. Go into the settings, tool. I have FTP server on FTP root clover, and then it has the IP address. I put all this information on a little text file, but I have FTP server enabled right now, and I have that open. You have to have the system powered on so the red light's on. That'll enable Clover Shell to run so you can actually connect to the FTP. And I'm going to open my FileZilla. I'm going to go to where it says host. And the host is right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this information. And I'll put this all in the description for this video. Then we're going to look at the username and password. We have root and Clover. And the port will pretty much auto fill in once you do quick connect. So I'm on there now. now I'm going to open my info up because I want to go to where my RetroArch configuration is. That's what we changed the hot key binds in. And that'd be right here configurations. And I'm just going to copy this right here. Go to FileZilla. And I can literally just copy and paste that link right here. And I have my RetroArch configuration file right down here. I've already backed it up to my computer right here. So all I have to do is just literally just drag and drop it right into the mini NES. And I'll be able to revert back to the original settings. Because if you start getting too into changing settings on them hotkey binds, you're going to screw things up really quick. You might be fine on Nintendo, but then you go into another core like Nintendo 64 and you're going to be screwed up. Now obviously this is one way that you can revert back to RetroArch configuration file, and that's fine. The other thing you could do to revert back would be go into your HackG itself. You go into uh, modules, uninstall extra modules, and you want to uninstall RetroArch completely, and then you want to reinstall it completely. Now if you happen to have the CRT hack as well, you're going to want to uninstall both of them at the same time, and when they're both uninstalled, you will reinstall only RetroArch by itself, and then you will install CRT hack by itself. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the rewind feature, the slow motion feature, and how to back up your RetroArch configuration. It'll make things a hell of a lot easier rather than try to redo your system every time. But have some fun with the rewind feature, and uh, get the updated course for my Mega HMOD thread to make things a lot easier. There'll be more videos to come.